call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance for the meeting tonight, also those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. Good evening. We're going to begin the meeting here in just a moment by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Council Member Randy Thomas, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks as always. We give you thanks for this day, your blessings upon us individually, and upon our city of Jacksonville. As we more fully enter this 2015 hurricane season, with storms being named and hurricanes being predicted, we sincerely pray that you would give your providence and protection to our city and to our fragile coastal area that we live in. May your protection always be with us. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world. We pray for their anxious families and for their safety. And as always, we pray for our mayor and for our council that your guidance and your direction would be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Members of Council, uh, you've all received copies of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and we also have a couple of uh, amendments to that agenda that I, I would uh, wish for you to entertain. Uh, first off, on the uh, consent items, we want to remove item number three and also add a uh, consent item accepting a grant for a permanent checking station. You can add that as... Uh, Consent item six. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Next, we're going to do a few uh, presentations, and I'm going to come around front uh, to do this. In a, let's see. I guess I'll call you in just a second. The first uh, presentation we're going to make tonight is uh, with our Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. And uh, regularly do the uh, committee uh, recognize behaviors and activities uh, that advance the city's clean and green goals. And each recognition will fo focuses on areas that are identified by the ENA advise Advisory Committee as work tasks for awareness and capacity building. Um, I would like to ask Council Member uh, Angela Washington if she can join me up front here in taking care of our presentation tonight. She's also uh, the chair chairperson. Let's see, uh, the chairperson's not here tonight, but I have uh, Grace. Harbrick. Yeah, <laughs> she said. <clears throat> Is it Harbrick? Harbrick? Is that Harbrick. okay? Thank you. Um, at this time, uh, I'm going to let you hold this. Okay. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Council Member Jerome Willingham uh, to join me here in Todd Williams. I, okay, I didn't see you earlier. There you go. Todd is, a, is of New Line Construction. And what we're going to do, uh, <clears throat> the Jacks, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to recognize this beautiful residence that's been built in our downtown area. Just another 
uh, uh, just an example of uh, some of the great work that's been done there to beautify our downtown area. Yeah, good job here. Yeah. <laughs> that's really great. Uh, this evening, we want to award the Clean and Green Star Award for Outstanding Residential Appearance uh, to Kim and Tyrone Willingham, and, and Jerome, his brother, is going to accept on his behalf. Uh, Oh, this too? Oh, you can get, get all that stuff. Right. Get, get a lot of stuff. You can have the bag too to carry it all. <laughs> carry it in. Um, this is a nomination that came from within the uh, in, uh, Environmental and Appearance Committee, and they wanted to recognize the difference uh, this home has made in our downtown area. And as you can tell by the photograph, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, featuring a distinctive and classic white picket fence around it. And uh, the, this downtown home is warm and inviting. With the uh, urns and fern, uh, with urns of ferns, I guess it's like pots of ferns, uh, welcoming guests at the front steps. It runs of boxwoods and gives a uh, and it gives a structure to a, a classic style with the crushed stone driveway, uh, allowing the owners to park without disturbing the view of the Riverview uh, Riverwalk Crossing Park out in front, out the large front windows. Uh, the muted gray and bright white uh, modern cottage style with Charleston influences make this LP Willingham Parkway home a visual benefit to our downtown area. Obviously the Willinghams are not uh, here this evening. Uh, well at least Tyrone's not here this <laughs> evening. Jerome is here and they have asked Tyrone's brother Jerome to uh, and the builder Todd, Todd Williams here to accept this award on their behalf and uh, again Todd you did a great job y'all did a great job down there it looks beautiful Tyrone specifically wanted Todd to come up because he was so um, thankful for the good job that you did on his home so I do want to mention too that uh, Todd is one of our builders for community development and so he's built several homes down in the, um, the downtown area, fantastic homes. And uh, our downtown area is a beautiful waterfront community with affordable housing. We have expensive homes and we have affordable homes. So um, thank you for, for your work, Kai. Oh, I also wanted to mention that there's another connection with beautification, and that's Mr. Lynn Thomas is in the house tonight. Would you please stand? Thank you. Everybody, everybody remember when I first got involved with um, local government, Lynn Thomas was already here. And he was, um, I met him through the Beautification and Appearance Commission. And he was a, a stalwart in beautification for the city of Jacksonville. And before we got our horticulturalists, it was Lynn Thomas, who was responsible for all of our beautification and the great job at Riverwalk Crossing. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. And is that you? Are you joined tonight? Are you by yourself? Thank you for coming. <laughs> is your family here? And Mr. Williams' family is here too. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I know that's. We, we, all these connections are about teamwork, and thank you for your team. Thank you. That's a great job. Very good job. And I want to remind every citizen out there that you can make uh, a nomination uh, also. And if you see something that is worthy of clean and green nomination, particularly for a residence or a business here in Jacksonville, uh, please go online or call the city of Jacksonville and uh, make that nomination. You can get a nomination form sent to you, or you can do it online. And thank you. <clears throat> For the next uh, presentation, I'd like to ask Ronnie Dorn. I know you're here. Your whole family's here, so come on up. <clears throat> and also Chief Yanero. All right, you've joined a, a, a lot of us elite, uh, an elite group of us, right? Yes, sir. Congratulations, Thanks, by the sir. way. Appreciate it. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Ronnie, 
was a member of the 260th session of the Federal Bureau of Investigation's National Academy and completed the program on uh, June 12, 2015. Int internationally known for its academic excellence, the FBI Academy is held in Quantico, Virginia and offers 10 weeks. They cut it to 10 now? It used to be 11 weeks when I went. Okay, 11 week, uh, 10 weeks of advanced investigative management and fitness training for selected officers with proven records as professionals within their agencies. The course includes instruction in law, enforcement, in law, behavioral science, forensic science, understanding terrorism and terrorist mindsets, leadership development, communication, health, and fitness. On average, these officers have 19 years of experience and return to their agencies to serve in executive level positions. The FBI National Academy graduates comprise less than 1% of the country's law enforcement officers. The program is dedicated to proving standards or improving standards for law enforcement and better preparing officers to meet the criminal challenges in their communities. Captain Dorn is a Jacksonville native, graduating from Jacksonville High School in 1990. A 20-year veteran of the department, he was one of the department's first canine handlers and serves as a member of the department's tactical team. A graduate of Mount Olive College, he holds the NC, uh, North Carolina Training and Standards Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate, is a graduate of the Leadership in Police Organizations program in the Virginia School of Polygraph. And we're going to present to you a beautiful certificate from the Federal Bureau of Investigation the United States Department of Justice, uh, a certificate of graduation from the Academy. And again, like I say, you have joined a very elite group. Thank you. And, and I know that uh, I know that while there, uh, Ronnie learned a whole lot of things. But one thing he did learn that he probably didn't realize: there's hills up there that you have to run on, and it's a lot different than around here, isn't it? Uh huh. But anyway, congratulations yes, uh, on a job well done because it wasn't easy, was it? No, sure and being not. away from home that long and yeah. when you have, said they cut it down to ten, I thought that was long enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, Thanks, Ronnie. Yes, sir. I'm glad it was him and not me. <laughs> I still remember, it's been 17 years since I went, and I still remember every one of those hills that goes straight up that you have to run on. Okay, next I would like to ask uh, Norman Davis and his wife, Monique, uh, to join me up front. Also, i got a couple other people that I want to call up. I know Helen Thompson, are you here? Didn't see you back there, Helen. Tammy? Tammy Adams? Norman, how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. Good to see you. Good to you. Very proud to be able to do this tonight for you. Yes, sir. Uh, a native of the Bronx, New York, and a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, Norman Davis began his law enforcement career with the Jacksonville Police Department in June of 1998 as an officer in the Uniform Patrol Division. Lieutenant Davis was transferred to the Community Service Division as a school resource officer in 2001, serving students at Newbridge Middle School, Northwoods Park Middle, and Jacksonville Commons Middle School. In 2006, he accepted a specialized assignment as the department's a uh, great or gang resistance education and training officer, utilizing his knowledge, skills, and expertise to positively impact the youth of our community. Sergeant, now they're calling you Sergeant, they went from Lieutenant Sergeant. Sergeant uh, Norman received his advanced law enforcement certificate from the North Carolina Training Standards Commission in August of 2010 and was promoted to the rank of corporal in, in October 2010. In April of 2011, was promoted to the rank of sergeant where he led the community response team and supervised 
the agency's canine program. Monique, his wife of 30 years, will be pinning on his uh, badge. I think the chief's got all that right now. But first off, we're going to swear you in. And if you uh, all would step up here to the microphone. And uh, ladies, okay, if you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. <clears throat> I, Norman Davis. I, Norman Davis. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States, the Constitution and the laws of the United States, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, and the Constitution and the laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, discharge the duties of my office, as lieutenant, as lieutenant of the city of Jacksonville Police Department, of the city of Jacksonville Police Department. And maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations. And maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations. Of the city of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Of the city of Jacksonville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Yeah. Lieutenant. Yeah. And as usual, my admonition is try not to draw any blood. <laughs> Big badges now, Warren. I want to be able to see it. I'm both on band aids. Just go ahead. Here we go. This, I'm going to give you this in pieces. There's the first bar. Okay. We're going to put that somewhere in his collar. Yes. Yeah, hell in this before it goes. There you go. It always it always helps to put hold the market hold. Congratulations, Norman. I 
Thank you all very much. Tonight, I'd like to ask our finance director, Gail Maids, and any of her staff that are accompanying her tonight that wish to come forward. Okay, sorry. That's a, that's a good finance director. You're not accruing any overtime <laughs> expenses. There you go. The city recently received notification that the city of Jacksonville and its finance department has been awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting by the Government Finance Officers Association for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2014. The Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting is the highest level of recognition given to or in the area of government accounting and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a local government and finance department. This is the 24th consecutive year that the City of Jacksonville and its finance department has received this recognition the city would like to recognize the hard work and dedication of our entire finance department, but also the leadership of that finance department, Ms. Gail Mays, for this outstanding achievement. Thank you very much, Gail. We were expecting Gail to give a long speech regarding <laughs> physical conservancy, but apparently she's not interested. She does real well with the accounting, but I don't think she really cares much about the speaking <laughs> part of it. Anyway, um, I want to thank everybody who's come out tonight, especially for you know a, a lot of these presentations. Uh, some great accomplishments that have been recognized here tonight, and. Uh, I do want to give you an opportunity. I know some of you came, you know, primarily or probably solely for the uh, presentations. So I'm going to take a real quick time out uh, and give you an opportunity to leave. I'm not saying you have to. You're welcome to stay. Tom Williams. All right, I'm going to go, go back in session here, and this will be our first uh, section of public comment for the evening. I have two, two people, two individuals that have signed up. I have Mr. Ed Blizzard, Jr. Yes, if you would come up to the podium, sir, and uh, state your name and address for the clerk, for the record. I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the best kept secrets in Jacksonville, which is Branchwood Park. Um, at least until a couple of weeks ago, people didn't know about it. Uh, but now people are coming down there quite regularly, thanks to the efforts of 14 uh, family families in Branchwood and Dr. Woodruff. I need to commend him for his quick action to see that our park uh, continues to thrive. It's a beautiful four-acre park at the end of Audubon Drive. There's monarch butterflies. It's properly maintained by the residents of Audubon Drive. We have a mowing committee in place. Since we understand the parks can only cut it so often, I talked to Mr. LaQuarrie. We will go ahead and make sure the grass is kept at an acceptable level in between. But uh, Dr. Woodruff, thank you so much. You'll be getting thank you notes and probably more Christmas cards than you usually <laughs> get. But uh, we encourage Everyone in Jacksonville comes to see our beautiful neighborhood park. 
It's a good place to sit with your families, have a picnic, come on the uh, playground equipment, which is gradually coming back. And today, I got a second trash can stand. Never seen anybody so happy to get a trash can stand in your life. But uh, this is going to be at the entrance of the park, and it'll help us maintain the cleanliness of the park. And all these awards you're giving out are, are all well and good. We have our own little clean and green committee with, the, like I say, the 14 uh, families. And I come across this the other day, and it just like the city council members to strive for this always. This is only given, we got it in 1992, you may recall. It's only given to 10 cities in the United States of America each year. And I think we deserve another one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Want to go now? I, I think we're going. Yeah, probably best. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Dr. Woodruff, Mr. Carter, Mr. Massey, Ms. Carmen. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I would like to express my appreciation to the city for the outstanding support of the Fourth Marine Division Final Muster that took place 4 through 7 August of 2015. The Iwo Jima uh, veterans were very appreciative of all the support they received during their visit. From the nine bus support provided by the City Transportation Department to the welcome billboards placed on the highways, which they almost they made a stop at the Highway uh, 24 to take pictures, uh, couldn't have gone any better. From the first day when the veterans were picked up from all four hotels, the transportation department went above and beyond the call of duty. Mr. Anthony Prince, who was present on the first day, rolled up his sleeves and was an integral part in ensuring all buses were in the prospective locations and ready to go. With the youngest veteran being 90 years young, you can imagine how long it took to load nine buses. The rest of the week, Mr. Roy uh, Bredo and the staff continued the evolution without missing a beat. Throughout the whole week, we were never late to an event. When the buses were escorted to Building 1 for Morning Colors by JPD, the veterans felt honored to have a police escort. Just the expressions on their faces just was tremendous. There were so many people, there are so many people <clears throat> in Jacksonville that made the 4th Marine Division Association final muster a success. I would like to publicly thank the City Transportation Department with Mr. Anthony Prince, Roy Bradell, and all the drivers. <clears throat> the City Communications by Mr. Glenn Hargett, Alan Covey, Kevin uh, Riopel, and Lisa Miller. JPD Traffic uh, by uh, Captain Nordstrom, Lieutenant Gill, Sergeant Williams, Corporal Frazier, Corporal Smallwood, Corporal Smith, and P.S. Eigelberger. Uh, the 2MAF, MCI East, Camp Lejeune, USO, led by Ms. Uh, Deb Fisher and all her staff and volunteers. The Military Order of Purple Hearts, uh, Beirut Memorial, Chapter 642. The Town of Swansboro, Camp Johnson, Montford Point Marines, Onslow Memorial Hospital, Hotels, Home Suite, as you were, uh, Home Two Suites, Hampton Inn, Fairfield Inn, and Sleep Inn. And in my opinion, I think the teamwork displayed throughout this event prove that the city and Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune can accomplish anything together. Thank you. Oh, I guess we ought to do that, haven't we? I'm sorry. Uh, this, whole, this whole rearrangement here has got me confused. So we, what we will do is we will... Um, uh, entertain a motion here for adoption of the minutes from the July 21st, 2015 workshop meeting, the July 21st, 2015 regular meeting, and the consent items that are on your uh, agenda for this evening. And I'd entertain a motion to adopt those. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now we're back in order to the uh, uh, reports. Thank you. Uh, technically, no report other than I'm 
proud to be a part of the city of Jacksonville and proud to be a part of this city council. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Uh, no report. Thank you. Ms. Washington. Um, yes, I have a report from the Environmental and at Appearance Advisory Committee that September is our cleanup month, and so we're encouraging the citizens of Jacksonville to help in this process for the month of September. Um, it is a cleanup month for the city, and the committee will also explore opportunities to recognize our sanitation department, streets, and parks divisions for their role in the clean, excuse me, the clean and green efforts in Jacksonville. Also, two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to represent the city of Jacksonville at the National League of Cities, um, National Black Caucus of Local Elective Officials in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And basically the highlights of that particular conference really focused on um, economic development in terms of establishing partnerships and low economic communities and helping to build um, entrepreneurship in a diversified workforce. And also there was a presentation that really talked about police brutality in terms of how communities can bring themselves together and take a proactive stance to collaborate with their police police officers in order to go out into the communities and make themselves more visible, um, putting on various different conferences and seminars within certain communities, within certain schools, so that the police officers are seen more as police friendly as opposed to in a negative connotation. So that was pretty much um, an overview of the highlights, um, many much information, but the economic um, diversity workforce and um, focusing on the police departments was two of the highlights. So it was a wonderful conference, and other than being stung by a Portuguese man of war, I had a wonderful trip. Thank you. <laughs> I just spiced it up a little bit for you. Um, I guess I'll, be, I'll go ahead. Um, I did have the opportunity this weekend to travel to Durham to observe our one and only Carmen Miracle, city clerk for the city of Jacksonville, be, uh, bestow the honor of... Uh, clerk, Municipal Clerk of the Year by the North Carolina Municipal Clerks Association. All right. <laughs> and she, she represented the city extremely well. And I'm going to tell you what, she's quite the public speaker herself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, congratulations, Carmen. Uh, I know we kind of surprised you a little bit, uh, and your family was able to join in. It was a, it was a, a great evening, good event. Um, also, we had Senator Burr in town on Friday uh, at a luncheon. Had opportunity to attend that. We had a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with him, and uh, uh, that's basically my report. And I'll go to Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, very quickly, the TDA um, work is continuing on our destination study uh, that was authorized by the uh, by the authority. Portion of the report uh, may produce durable, sustainable overnight stays in the in our lodging facilities, and that's nearing its completion. And of course, we will bring that forward when that when that is fully complete. And Fernando, you gave a great presentation on the Fourth uh, Marine Division's final muster, and uh, we certainly did give, and uh, they did receive a hero's welcome when they came to our community as. Our motto stands. Um, we, uh, as you know, we helped provide uh, provided the funding for the uh, transportation for the muster, so we were very pleased with that, and and we we're honored to to have them here, and also had the opportunity to present a proclamation to the Pink Heels, uh, second year, uh, the Pink Fire Trucks that uh, that support raising money for women's illnesses at uh, Target on Saturday. That was a well attended event. Uh, thank you to our public safety and, and firefighters that were there representing us and, and a wonderful event. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bittner. Yes, I have a couple items as your representative to the City County Civic Affairs Committee. Uh, last <clears throat> the meeting last week, we discussed the Freedom Fund observance and members of the Civic Affairs Committee are debating an evening event with the annual Freedom Fund observance mm -hmm. this year. Uh, and going off the success of the program last year, a group of radio stations has offered a concert at no charge 
as part of the festivities. This would allow us to close the front of City Hall to host a family-friendly event. Uh, Patriot Day 9-11 observance. This year, the 2nd Marine Division Band and the Jacksonville High School Orchestra will perform at the annual Patriot Day 9-11 observance. As is tradition now, the observance will be held at 8.15 a.m. at the 9-11 Memorial in the Lejeune Memorial Gardens on Friday, September 11, 2015. And the committee is also thinking about combining with that particular activity some ways of recognizing those men and women who served in the service who are no longer with us. Planning for that is continuing. The committee has also wrapped up its work on the Civic Index, and I believe a copy of that will be forthcoming to the members of City Council in short order. And the last thing I want to report on is that I am so surprised when I heard about Ms. Miracle's uh, recognition as Clerk of the Year, why it took the state so long to recognize what a talent we have here every day of the <laughs> week. Congratulations. Mr. Wellingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, continuing with uh, Mr. Bittner's theme of freedom, I too had the opportunity to attend the NBC Leo, uh, the conference in, in Florida, and the um, we're approaching in December the 100th and 50th anniversary of the adoption of the and ratification of the 13th Amendment, which um, abolished slavery. And I participated on a p policy committee which passed a resolution that will be forwarded to the NLC to recognize the um, ratification as a national holiday. That resolution um, also recognizes the commitment that this country makes to fight for freedom, and a lot of that is uh, generated at the 2nd Marine, Di Marine Division and New River Air Station right here where we sit. So it was a particular um, um, importance to me to participate um, in that resolution. And the resolution also looks um, uh, to the relevance of today as we have um, um, human trafficking, which is which continues to be a, a, a really big problem internationally and nationally. Mm -hmm. And um, I think 2013, the latest statistics or information was that that's a $32 billion industry in human trafficking. And also it looks at the um, the freedom for children uh, not to fight in wars. And I think there's about 300,000 uh, 300, child combatants around the world. So the, the resolution certainly um, commemorated the past, but it, it looks to be relevant to the future and freedom. So thank you. Nothing thank further. You. Dr. Woodruff. There it goes. Uh, several things. Uh, first of all, with school starting back, we would like to remind the public that the city does offer before school and after school programs for young people. We still have openings available at the following elementary schools. The Commons Elementary, the Commons Recreation Center, Jack M. Yet, and Bell Fork. That is for after school programs in elementary. The Newbridge Middle School also still has uh, vacant positions. Remind the public that that is a cost of $65 per student for people who live inside the city, $110 for those who live outside the city. Both of those rates are per month. Secondly, this coming week we will be doing some water line maintenance in Wooten Park. So we're posting on the restrooms there that Tuesday, August 25th, Wednesday the 26th, and Thursday the 27th, the restrooms at Wooten Park will be out of service. We apologize for that inconvenience. We would also like to mention that the city has now signed three more contracts to bring family living back into the downtown area. 
We have three public-private partnership homes that have already been purchased. You recognize Todd Williams this evening. Uh, Delphi is building uh, two other houses. So within the next 30 days, you'll see three more homes coming under construction in the downtown area. Also, on Friday of this week, your city street department and crews tore down the 56th vacant and dilapidated home in Jacksonville that has occurred in the last four years. They are to be commended for that. Mayor and members of council, uh, before I, well, I will thank you for your continued leadership and service, but I'd like to close my report by showing you a short video regarding the success of National Night Out. That was not the short video here in this video. Special word of congratulations to Ashley Weaver, captain who led this event this year. Well done by all of the city departments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to commend the Sports Commission for the football jamboree. It was um, um, very impressive. Everything went off well. I think the participants had a wonderful time. I don't think there were any injuries. And um, um, Glenn Hargett uh, was filming. And um, just thank everybody for coming together and pulling that off, because I think that's the second one. That's the second one. Yeah, that's the second one that they've done. And um, from what I observed, I'm sure that the teams just can't wait to participate, and probably even more uh, next year. This is a good I think it's, uh, it's important to note that the cooperation from Commanding General Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune has been just tremendous. And, and uh, you know, he, he has been over backwards to help us make this happen for the second year in a row, and it will just continue to grow. And we're very excited about that, that partnership. Right. Mr. Carter? All right, we'll entertain a motion to. Uh, well, we're going to adjourn this meeting here, and we're going to go. We got some unfinished business to take care of. So move. All in favor? Aye. Aye.